I've been working on this double neck telly now for the last couple weeks. I finally got it edited down and ready to walk you guys through it. Double necks are hot right now, so let's get to it. First thing we'll do is run this through the joiner. Since it's a quilted piece of wood, I'll get a little bit of tear out, so you gotta go slow and take small passes. We'll then apply some tight bond wood glue. We'll bring the top together first, make sure it lines up along the lines of figure. Clamp down the top. And then slowly tighten up the sides and bring over this clamp over the top to make sure that I get that seam flush, less sanding later. And you can see I added two more additional clamps to bring it down. And then we'll bring that huge piece of Corinna to the drum sander and begin to sand it. It's three pieces of Corinna. If you make a wide guitar out of a one piece, eventually it'll warp. So then once the top is done, we'll cut it out, let it dry for 24 hours, cut it out of my bandsaw here. We'll then route the top. We'll go slow. You wanna cut as close as you can to the template. That way you don't get any tear out. And then we'll sand this on my drum sander. Just get it so it sands off that seam and a little bit of the glue and we should be all set then. We'll then take that template and draw out the outline of where I'm gonna glue it. And we'll start drilling some holes to lighten this up slightly. This is going to be a really heavy body if I leave it without drilling some holes. And drilling some holes will just lighten it up. I didn't do it in any particular pattern. But just wanted to make sure that I lighten sort of the edges and a little bit of the center. And then the routing for this, the channels are a little bit goofy. And I decided to do a couple different routing options depending on how I wanted to wire it. And I realized that I need to go all the way to the top and all the way down to the bottom. And when I route for the pickups, I'll be able to join that top one. And the way this is wired is it's through the toggle on the top and the toggle on the bottom. And we'll just glue this up to the body and then take it over to my wine press clamp and clamp it. Again, back to the Craftsman 10 inch bandsaw to trim this up. Saw is perfect for cutting corners and then back to the Craftsman table router to route this off flush. Bring this then to the rigid oscillating sander and sand the sides. I start with 120 up to 180 to 220. Get it nice and flat and less sanding later. For the top piece, I'm going to use the spindle sander. And the horns need a little bit more love. And this is after, I think, 180 grid. Just back and forth sanding. Lots of sanding on this one. Some sanding lines from the drum sander. This quilted maple is slightly softer than a standard quilt top. Not sure why. But we'll start with some 80 grit, wipe it down with some water, make sure I'm picking up all the grain, make sure there's no glue line, which is why I'm really doing that. And then when I come back with some higher grit, I know what I've got. 
So then we'll do all of the routing before we do the final sanding. We're going to do a wider control cavity. Got a bunch of different templates for this. So we'll route this out. I start with a bushing bit, and I'll come back with a template bit, and then get it flush. We'll flip out templates and recess for the cover. We're going to add a little bit of a belly cutout, and we'll come back with a bunch of different tools to do that. This is a spoke shave. That's a smaller spoke shave. And this is why I didn't drill any holes towards the belly. I was going to lighten it up this way. And we got a little bit of an Ibex plane. And on Corinna, this works pretty fast. You can see how much of a mess I create relatively quickly. This body is too tall to take to the bandsaw, so I have to do it by hand. So that Ibex plane takes it off in a bunch of different spots, and then the spoke shave sort of levels it out, and then I'll come back with a sander and then sand it as well. So we're going to lay out the necks then next. So I don't really have a center line to follow, so I've got to create my own center line. So I'm measuring the distance from the center of the join and then carrying that line through with my straight edge. You guys need a long straight edge in the shop. And for some reason, the routes are on just a slight difference, which made me really aggravated. So measure once, measure twice, before you do any cutting. So then I've got a drilling template. Make sure this all lines up. And I've got a separate video out there for you guys on how I actually did the neck pockets and how I determined the angle. So we'll run through that quickly here just to show you, but there's another video you can watch to see how to calculate the neck angle. I'm using a shallow roller bridge, and usually you'll want to do a one to two degree angle. We went with about two, because these bridges are a little bit taller. So I've got some shims. We're gonna clamp this down, get it nice and level, clamp the back side so that it doesn't move got a thicker template here. This is a half inch template. There's not a lot of flex. We'll route this out, make sure everything is level and the template's not moving. So I build a little sort of clamping hold down system or whatever so that template doesn't move too much. And then we'll slowly route this down about an eighth at a time making sure I've got a nice flat pocket, got no gaps. We'll just go back and forth and make sure that this is right. The vacuum doesn't work all that well at this point. You can see I'm covered in dust, but we did one neck and then we flipped it over and did the other neck as well. And we're gonna take my laser level and just make sure I've got all the center lines drawn properly, everything looks right, and we'll mark where the humbuckers are gonna go. This is gonna be a dual humbucker guitar, so a 12 string on the top and a six string on the bottom, and we'll be using some lace sensor pickups. Brought out the dump guitar just to double check the depth and the distance. And lace pickups are a little bit wide, so I grab an old template that's a little bit wider and route. So I'll flip this around for the other side and finish routing this out. Just go down about 
a half inch. No, go down about a quarter inch each time and just slowly pull that material out. And then do the same thing for the bottom. Go back and forth and route it out. This is my DeWalt 621 router. It's my favorite router. It gets all the chips out. It's easy to use. We'll then do a little bit of a recess for the bottom neck. Make it a little bit easier to play. We'll just take this down 3 16 You can see on this router I've got an extension plate that I can route off to the side and hold. I'm doing this freehand. I sort of drew it out. Double check how it looks. Come back and bring it down to that full 3 16 We'll pull out some hand tools then and shave down the neck heel to get it flush. So we got some old Japanese carving tools and a chisel with a bevel and we'll just sort of pull this down slowly. Using current is really nice. It carves easily. This is actually pretty easy to do. Which if you've done this on Maple, it's a massive pain. And then once we carve it, we'll actually go ahead and sand it as well. Just sand this flush. All right, so then we get some drilling templates and I did a video on the templates I'm selling, if you guys send me the specs, I will make a drilling template for you. I did another video of that as well. We're going to use the shallower roller bridge for both. And we custom made that template, drilled it down, and then drilled it out. It's funny, I couldn't get to one of the holes in this guitar because of how wide the body is. So then I just have to take my hand drill power drill, whatever, and drill it out myself. I had a pilot hole drilled for the toggle switch and we'll just take one of those step bits and drill it out to, I think, 7 16 I have some tape there to mark it. And then we're going to do a blade switch without the control cavity. So we'll use the control template. We we'll use the control plate as a template and drill this out with a 16th bit. The process for doing this is actually relatively easily. You drill out the screws where it mounts first and then you go back and drill out with a 16th bit the blade section and then once you do that you grab either like a file or a saw saw blade like a coping saw blade and you just cut out where you drilled so I'll get a 16th bit and then drill out where the blade is at like 16th increments and then I'll come back with a a saw blade and then just cut it and then I'll come back with a file and file it. So this is all fast forwarded but you can see you just go slow cut it out come from the front and the back and I use the control plate as sort of a guide and if you hold the blade flatter versus up and down you can get it on a straighter line and then that's the file I've got a 16th file and you can see I'm holding it close to the body and I can shave 
the side so that it's flat and straight. A little bit of work, a little bit of practice, but it comes pretty easy once you've done it a couple times. A little bit of finagling to get it to look right. And you can see when I hold it flatter to the body, I'm getting it more on a straight line. When I'm doing up and down, it's being more aggressive. So we'll test fit it, see what it's like. And then towards the bottom where the screws are, you want to sort of hold that file on an edge and make sure that it comes close to the bottom so that it's not sort of bridging the gap where each pickup is and you're not getting it in that middle position. A little bit of back and forth to get this right, but it doesn't take too that long doesn't take all that long. Play with it, make sure it's right, and we're good. And then I'm gonna take this down where the blade is just by a little bit less than the 16th. This just sort of helps get a little bit more depth where the blade is and get a little bit better action on it as well. We'll then take my awl and mark where the 3 8 bit should go for each volume and tone. And I've only got two of those. Drill those out. Test fit it, and we're good to go. And then we'll mark the neck holes next. And the error of our ways, we ordered the necks with holes drilled, so i got to get these to line up perfectly and my templates have them already and I double check them a couple times and we'll just knock these down make sure they're perfectly lined up and drill we'll then drill these out 3 16th bit and for where I got a little bit of recess I'll put a piece of wood in there so I don't get any blowout and then sanding did a lot of sanding here so I did that first initial sand and then after it was all routed and done I did the final sand I still got to sand out that bumps from the carving but I started with 80, 120, 220, and brought it all the way up to 320. I think I only show one grid here. No one wants to really watch that much sanding. I think it's worse than paint drying. Sometimes when you get paint drying, it does cool things, but not so much with sanding. It's a lot of sanding. So once we get it all standed down to 320, we're going to apply some black and do a cherry burst. I've already done the video on this fully, but I figured I would include this for those that haven't seen it. I've got a full 20 minute long video on this process. Here I'm speeding it up for the last two minutes. Two coats of black. Let it dry 24 hours. Sand it off with some open grit sandpaper. And then we're going to put orange down first and then red down next. We're going to then pull a little bit of the color out and hit it with some sanding sealer. And it's going to look spectacular. So this is the orange, two coats. And you want to apply the red then immediately after you put down the orange course after texting somebody there's the red it's all wet two coats let it dry 24 hours and then this is where the magic is guys you've got to come back and pull a little bit of color back out so I've got kind of like a Brillo pad mesh pad someone told me what it is but I forgot what it is already 
and this just pulls a little bit of color out and gets it to pop. You want to keep that hand flat so you don't get any gouges. This is the third coat of sanding sealer. I put five light coats on, locks in the color. I do it very sparingly on the first sort of three coats. And then by that fourth or fifth coat, it's kind of dry. It looks good. And then we're using wipe on poly. I'm doing four coats, maybe five coats of the wipe on poly. And then we'll get ready for the assembly next. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.